This is Focal Point with Brian Fisher on AFR Talk. Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point, the AFR Talk, this Tuesday edition of Focal Point on the American Family Radio Talk Network. Glad to have you in the conversation with us. As I mentioned, President Obama right now in the middle of his first press conference uh, since March the 6th. So that is a long time ago. Uh, so virtually an eternity in political affairs. You know, and you know, you think of what was going on six months ago when the last time he had a press conference. I mean, the last time he had a press conference, he was two months away from his first campaign rally. Hadn't even started the presidential campaign yet. And at that time, back on March 6, you know who was leading the Republican primary? Rick Santorum was mopping the field. Uh, and so things have changed significantly uh, since the president's last press conference. Now, he talked about a number of things in the press conference today. I'm looking where uh, to grab my notes here. Now, obviously, one of the issues that, that came up is what is going to happen with the fiscal cliff and what's going to happen with some kind of solution to spending and to the deficit. Now, we're going to just play one soundbite that Jeff, my producer, grabbed from the beginning of the press conference where President, o President Obama lines out what he uh, intends to do. And, and I'll explain to you after you hear this clip, which again, President Obama just reiterates his soak the rich ideology. We come back out of the soundbite. I'll explain to you why this is total bilge, why it's hogwash, why it isn't even a partial solution to the problem that we're facing. I mean, President Obama seems to think that if he just says to the American people over and over and over again, we're just going to ask the rich to pay a little more, and that's going to solve the problem. I mean, that is the implication that you get when you listen to Barack Obama. All we need to do is ask the rich. They can afford it. They don't need it. And I say, Mr. President, who are you to make that judgment for somebody else? That's between them and God. It's not up to you to decide how much is enough? That's a matter of individual conscience between a man and God. That's just another indication of how the ideology of the left in this country is to replace God with government. In other words, in Barack Obama's fevered world, it's appropriate for the government to decide for you how much is enough. Now, in a Judeo-Christian worldview... That's between us and God. We work out with God what is enough for us. That's a matter of individual conscience. That's no business of the governments whatsoever. But Barack Obama is out there, and all these liberals are out there saying, oh, they got enough. Then that's up for us to decide. We get to decide how much is enough, how much money somebody needs to be happy. That's up to us. That's not up to you and God. That's up to government. So here's what President Obama said at his press conference just not long ago. What I'm not going to do is to extend Bush tax cuts for the wealthiest 2 percent that we can't afford and, according to economists, will have the least positive impact uh, on our economy. You've said that the wealthiest must pay more. Would closing loopholes instead of raising rates for them satisfy you? I think that there are loopholes that can be closed and we should look at how we can make uh, the process of deductions, the filing process, easier, simpler. Uh, but when it comes to the top 2 percent, what I'm not going to do is to uh, extend further a tax cut for folks who don't need it, uh, which would cost uh, close to a trillion dollars. And it's very difficult to see how you make up that trillion dollars, if we're serious about deficit reduction, just by closing loopholes and deductions. Uh, you know, the math tends not to work. Now, again, you heard that they don't need it. What? I mean, the hubris and the arrogance of that. I mean, I am royally offended by that, that he feels he has the right to make that decision for somebody else, how much they need, whether they have enough, 
Uh, I mean, that's just that is just royally uh, uh, arrogant of the president to to make that assumption. But here's the other thing I want you to notice: he's determined to raise the tax rates on the wealthy, not just tax revenue. Did you get that part? Because John Boehner's already given up. He's given up the store. He's already run up the right flag. He's already surrendered. Paul Ryan has even surrendered. They've said, yeah, we'll look at tax reform to increase tax revenue from the wealthy. We don't want to raise their rates. We just want to raise revenues. So in other words, what John Boehner and Paul Ryan want to do, this is deceptive on their part, frankly. What they want to do is increase taxes on upper income earners but do it in a way that it's not obvious that that's what they're doing. They're just going to take away a loophole here. They're going to take away a deduction here. But the tax rates are going to stay the same. So they're going to be out there saying, hey, we kept your tax rate the same. Uh, your, ta the, your tax burden is going to go up because we're taking this deduction away from you and that deduction away from you. That's what Boehner and Ryan are talking about. Closing loopholes to raise revenue, keep the rates the same, but generate more money. That's a tax increase. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let anybody fool you about that. Don't let anybody lie to you. Don't even let Paul Ryan lie to you about that. If they raise tax revenue from upper income earners by closing loopholes, that is a tax increase. It doesn't matter to that taxpayer whether he's paying more because the rates have gone up or because his deductions have gone down. It makes not a whit of difference to him. That might help in kind of political posturing, but it's, it's immaterial to the guy that has to actually cough up uh, the, the tax revenue. And this is, what, this is the point that I've frequently made, and we've got to keep drilling at home because this is what even the Republicans don't get. I mean, you have, um, who was it the other day? Bill Crystal, Weekly Standard. We, we shouldn't fall on our swords for the sake of a few millionaires. How stupid is that, he says. And I say to Bill Crystal, who, who, who are the people that are making, creating jobs in America? I mean, this is moronic. It is the, it, it's the people with resources. You know, I've said this often. I've never drawn a paycheck from somebody that didn't have more money than I do. Never, not once. It's the people who have more money than you and me that create the jobs for us. That's where we get the jobs. That's where we find the jobs. So you start taking money away from them and, and pouring it down this giant maw of the federal government where it just disappears and is wasted or is given to other people, then you're just taking away the resources that they need to be able to create more jobs for you, your family, and to increase wages. I mean, it, it, it's just idiocy uh, to think that that is in any way, shape, or form good for the little guy. And as I explained yesterday, you know, we tried this back in 1992. Uh, ah, the, the rich don't need it. Let's just slap a luxury tax on yachts. Remember that when they did that? Uh, we're just going to, the, the, the rich can afford yachts. So if they buy a new yacht, we're just going to drill them to the wall. We're just going to nail them to the rafters with a luxury tax because they can afford it. They don't need it. You know what happened? You remember what happened when they were going to soak the rich with this luxury yacht tax? They stopped buying yachts. Now, they already had yachts. Didn't hurt them a bit. They just sailed the old model for another year or two. Who got hurt? the people that build and sell yachts. These are people like you and me. These are guys that go to work with a tool belt around their waist. These are the guys that sit in a cramped office negotiating sales of the yachts that these hourly laborers are working hard to build. All of a sudden, they had no work. They were out of work. They were out of jobs. Why? Because of this moronic thinking that we ought to soak the rich. They've got more than they need. we got to go get them. It's not fair that they have what they have. What happens? It's the little guy that always, it's the little guy that always gets hurt. Now, I want to put this in uh, perspective um, about what difference it would actually make. And I want, you to, I want you to get this because this is going to be our sort of Fisher factoid of the day. So I want you to remember this. Remember, our deficit this year is going to be about $1.3 trillion. We have now run trillion-dollar-plus deficits every year that President Obama has been in office. He racked up more debt in his first term than had been accumulated in the entire history of the United States from the founding until Bill Clinton. He did that all by himself in one term. Now, he says, hey, we can fix this problem 
by asking the rich to pay just a little more. Like, we're just going to nick them. We're just going to ding them. We're just going to draw a little blood. And that's going to solve this problem. I mean, that's the impression that's created because he's not talking about getting money from any other place. The only place he's talking about getting money is from what he considers the people who are wealthy, over $250,000. But as we've seen, a lot of those people are small business owners. Now, I don't understand how all that works because I've never owned a small business, but they pay their taxes on their personal tax returns. So it's small business, but it's funneled through their personal tax returns. So you're talking about a lot of very ordinary people that may have a handful of employees and their total revenues over $250,000 a year. They're going to get drilled uh, by this. So they're going to have to start putting people out of work. And by the way, maybe I'll get to this in a minute, but one of the president's biggest supporters to show you how this works, one of his biggest donors, one of his top five donors is a guy by the name of John Stryker. Now, he's heir to the Stryker Corporation. This is one of the largest medical device and equipment manufacturers in the entire world. His grandfather was the one that invented the mobile hospital bed. So this Stryker Corporation, they've been innovators when it comes to hospital beds, artificial joints, medical cameras, medical software. They are out there leading the pack. And this guy, this John Stryker, he's the heir to all that. He's one of the top five donors to President Obama's coffers. He gave $66,000 to Obama and the Democrat Party. He gave $2 million in this last cycle to the Democratic uh, Super PAC. He's on the Forbes 400. Now, what's going on? They have this medical device tax. This is a part of Obamacare. It goes into effect January 1, 2.3% tax on revenues, not on profits, but on revenues. We've talked about this before. A lot of these medical device manufacturers... That's their entire profit margin. Some of them don't even have profit margins that high of 2.3%. So it will consume every dollar that they make. So there's nothing there for higher wages. There's nothing there for expansion. There's nothing there for new jobs. It's gone, consumed, sucked down the maw of the federal government. So they are going to eliminate 96 jobs next month. You notice they waited till after the election to announce this. So these poor schlubs that are working for the Stryker Corporation. They're voting for Obama because their boss is a big-time donor. Now they find out they're getting laid off after they have voted. They are going to eliminate 5% of their global workforce. That's 1,170 jobs. Gone. History out of here. Why? Because of Obamacare. Now when I get back, I'll give you that Fisher factoid I told you about. Stay with us. Focal Point AFR Talk.